and the Jericho also calls, which is, re- I mean, I don't care who I am, unless I have pocket fours here, I would be a bit scared, right? Or 10-4, because, I mean... All right, so we got 50 hundreds. We've got a bit too easy in the game with the cookie monster avatar, I believe. We've got Jazer in the in the hand. Old school reg from Ukraine, I believe. And he's got a creepy avatar. And we've got the Jericho, who's a, a new school reg from Canada, who's got a creepy avatar as well, but in a different way. All right, so let's see what happens. Full by the Jericho and Bitweezy raises the 3x, which is pretty standard. Some people go to like 2.5 or 3.5, but I like old school 3x. Jazer calls. And at 10k, the rake's going to be pretty low, so Jazer is not going to fold a whole lot. Because the rake here is probably about 0.6 big blinds, I believe. So that's really not much of a factor. And he's got position, and Bitweezy is going to be raising a pretty wide range. So Jack-8-5 is a solid board for both of them. If anything, Jazer improves a bit more because he probably has a few more of the offsuit straight draws, a few more of the offsuit 8x and 5x. At the same time, Bitweezy, for instance, has more hands like pocket jacks, right? Because Jazer would always 3-bet or pocket 8s. Jazer would maybe not always 3-bet, but definitely sometimes, right? So Bitweezy is going to have more of the very strongest hands, but Jazer is going to have a, a few more medium strength hands. And they're both going to miss this board a decent amount as well with hands like King-9 offsuit, let's say. So I'm expecting bit too easy to be not too aggressive on this board, but also not super passive. So Jay's a bet's half pot on the flop after bit too easy checks. And he's basically saying, I've got, I've got a, I've got a decent hand willing to bet half pot. So I'm not representing a, a very strong hand necessarily. I just want to bet my hand for protection and a bit of value. And then maybe, maybe on later streets, I'll put in some bigger bets. I think this is a fine size in the use. I think going really small doesn't make as much sense, but uh, you know, under the right circumstances it does. Bit too easy check raises, do around 3x the ra- 3x the bet. So he's saying I, I check something like a strong jack or better on the flop or a strong draw or have some kind of, you know, some kind of bluff. Maybe some mergey hands occasionally like 8-7 of hearts. Bit too easy, quickly bets 1800 into 2400 on the king. And, and this king is not so relevant because if Bit too easy had a hand like ace king, he probably probably wouldn't check raise. If he had king queen, maybe, or king 10, he would check raise. At the same time, how is Jazer bet calling a king, right? Maybe he has like king six of spades, sure. But uh, this king is actually not so relevant, so I expect Bit too easy to be pretty aggressive. And Bit too easy does not need a good card for his range to be aggressive, as we all know. Call by Jazer. So Jazer mostly has a jack, I would say, at this point. Maybe he has something like a flush draw, like a pair in a flush draw. But mostly he's bet calling a jack and then calling the turn. And this is a scary card, right? Because both guys could conceivably have queen 10. Both guys could have a flush. I guess bit too easy is going to have an advantage when it comes to sets. Maybe he check raise and like kings on the flop, let's say. Maybe he check raise and like aces. So if anything, this runout is a little bit better for B2Easy, but Jazer can have plenty of good stuff as well. Check by B2Easy. All in. So Jazer goes all in for almost one and a half times the pot. So at, at this point, it's even difficult to represent a hand like Jack-8, right? So he's representing mostly a flush or a straight. Uh, maybe he's got a hand like ace jack. That that would make some sense. But if he had like eight five or you know jack eight, I'm not sure he would bet this big. Maybe he has a set of eights, a set of fives. That's possible. So I think it's fine to have uh, all ins here. All right. So bit too easy checked here with the jack five and the flop playing the jack raise, which I think is a fine play. I like the bet on the turn as well with the uh, on the king. Uh, and on the river, I think you can either go for a small bet or a check. I think a check actually makes a lot of sense. 
The issue with this hand is that it has no blockers to Jazer's, val Jazer's Valley range, right? So you're kind of hoping that Jazer turns the hand into a bluff. And Jazer, he stabbed the flop with a pair and a good flush draw, called, it, called the checkers in the bed, and then shoved the river, which is fine. So I'll give Bitweezy a... I'll give him a 7 out of 10, and I'll give Jazer... I'll give him a 7 out of 10 as well. So what do you guys think? 2.5 by Whisper, seems like a fine sizing. Everybody folds. I don't think Moon is will fold, or it would be a very boring hand. <clears throat> so Moon is calls and checks the Ace, 10, 8. This board is pretty good for both of them. They're both gonna have 8s and 10s a lot, both gonna have hands like Ace, 10. They're both gonna have hands like Ace, 8 suited, and hands like Queen, Jack, so. Most likely, Wispa will size up a little bit, but he can be pretty aggressive. It's a pretty good board for him. I mean, it's a really good board for him. He has all the good stuff. So he bets a little bit under half pot, which is all right. I would personally not choose that sizing, but I think it's fine. And Munis calls. So Munis is saying he mostly has a pair or a draw, right? If he had two pair plus, he likely would have check raised. Even if he had an like ace queen or maybe ace king, he likely would have check raised. <clears throat> Turn jack is very relevant because nine seven gets there, king queen gets there, queen nine, ace ten, ten jack ten, etc. So yeah, very. Very scary, like it's a good card for both ranges, but scary at the same time because they know that the other player can have a strong hand as well. So Wisp bet's pretty big but not huge, and I think that's a pretty cool sizing. And the river makes things even more spicy because every you know both players can have an ace plus a flush, or maybe even ten plus a flush, of or of course just like a hand like King Nine of Hearts. Wispa bets one k and at uh, thirteen hundred, which is a which is a fine size thing to use. You can also overbet sometimes, but you know since Munis can have so many big flushes too, it's not like you can just ship the flop or ship the river. I mean, and just you know go uh, go to the next hand already. And Munis, Munis check raises, so he's representing a flush at this point. Maybe he's got a hand like King Queen with a heart. Um, but I'm guessing he mostly represents a flush. Wow. All in by Wispa. So Wispa's basically saying he's got the nuts, right? Maybe he's got something like King Nine of Hearts, but he's probably saying he's got the nuts or nothing. And maybe he's bluffing with a hand like Ace King with a heart, right? Trying to block the, the top of Munis's calling range. Munis calls. Ooh. All right. So, Wisp opens ace 10 under gun. He C bets on a, uh, ace 10 8. He bets uh, a nice sizing on the jack and a nice sizing on the on the three. And then obviously he shoves over the raise. Um, I'll give him a. I'll give him a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, I'll give him a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, Munas, I think, should have probably check raised. Um, he probably should have just check raised um, the turn with having the second nut straight as well as the flush. But I don't hate just calling because, you know, it's nice to have a hand like this in your range sometimes. Could he fold uh, for 2k more or whatever it was? I mean, it's difficult, right? Because it's easy to over bluff here with a hand like Ace King. So I can't blame him for calling. I don't know anything about Wispa yet, so I don't know how aggressive he is. But I can't blame Munas for calling. I'll give Munas a... I'll give him a 7 out of 10. And 9.5 for Wispa. Maybe half a point for the name. New hand, new chances. We've got Lucky CPS, who's been playing some big red games as of late. We've got the the hottest runner on Poker Stars, but also an excellent player in Big Blind Bet with the cat avatar. And we've got Meg Boyfin with the SpongeBob avatar. 250 on the button by Lucky CPS, which is basic but fine. Basic is not a bad thing. I make boyfriend calls, and he'll be checking this flop, I hope. And he does. 
So in Jack-10 Deuce, you can do many different things. You can bet small, you can bet big, you can bet medium, I guess. You can do each of those things. Uh, you can have a checking range. So everybody plays this board a bit differently. Some people range one third, some people go big or check, some people bet big, check, or bet small, right? Lucky CPS is probably the type of guy that will do, uh, that will choose option number three. He likes to mix it up. Big bets, I like it. And a call by Make Boyfin. So Make Boyfin's saying he's got, you know, a draw or, or a jack or a 10, basically. Maybe he's got a hand like ace, nine of clubs. And this king is definitely uh, a very interesting card. Both guys can improve with queen nine. I guess lucky CPS mostly improves with ace queen because make boyfriend with a three red preflop, right? Um, and lucky CPS will have hands like king jack and all the other good stuff. So not a great card for make boyfriend, but it is one on which uh, he improves, you know, sometimes. It's important that he doesn't always check raise queen nine. So on a card like this, he still has some straights. Uh, luck Lucky CPS goes for the pretty big over bet here. So he's basically saying he's got two pair of better at the least. And make boyfriend calls. All in by Lucky CPS. So he's representing, I mean, I would say he's representing King Jack Plus here. Maybe even better. And make boyfriend calls. Ooh. Cooler. So make boyfriend didn't three bet queen nine suited pre, which is fine. And you know, he, he check called queen nine, not only because lucky CPS is representing a more polarized range on the flop, but also, so on a board like this, he doesn't get crushed, right? And obviously, I mean, he never has better than this hand. Maybe I guess he occasionally has ace queen, but he doesn't have better than this hand more often. And he's, you know, if he folds this hand, he's basically folding everything against an aggressive good player like lucky CPS. So easy call. And Lucky has pocket deuces, which is a fine play as well. So I'll give Make Boyfriend an 8.5 out of 10. I'll give Lucky CPS... I'll give him an 8 out of 10. So, quick hand. Short but sweet. What do you guys think? Born to Tilt makes it 110 in MP. And flat on the button by DiGerico. So this is one of the differences between, for instance, micro stakes and high stakes. You get to flat the button far more, right? Because there's way less rake. Uh, you pay way less rake when you go to the flop. Oops. Bit too easy. He's going to defend. Okay. He's getting pretty good price. 10 10 4 is a pretty dry board that should hit everybody. Uh, I think all of, all three of them should have a decent amount of tens. All three of them can have like pocket fours and flush draws and over cards with back doors, etc. So born to deal that small, which I think is a pretty sweet play. And the Jericho flats. So the Jericho is saying he's mostly got a pair or a flush draw, maybe something like ace high, maybe something like king queen of hearts sometimes. Bit too easy check raises, saying he's got a decent ten or better. He will maybe raise hands like ace four sometimes or pocket eight, stuff like that. Obviously bluffing as well. But he's representing mostly a ten. Born to tilt calls, which should scare Bit Too Easy a little bit, unless Bit Too Easy just has in like 10 4 pocket fours, then he's loving it. <clears throat> and the Jericho also calls, which is, I mean, I don't care who I am, unless I have pocket fours here, I would be a bit scared, right? Or 10 4. Because, I mean, if you have a 10, you definitely do not have the nuts. So if I were Bit Too Easy, I would check this board a lot, or I would bet small. I mean, Born to Tilt called a three-way check raise with a guy behind him who can easily just have a good hand or a good draw, right? So that's pretty scary. And the Jericho knows he can be dead, yet he's still called. So I think this is a smart play by Bitwizi. He potentially gets a bit of value. At the same time, he uh, he's careful. And he checks the river. So he's basically saying, I've got a hand like Ace-4 or 7 that gave up. Maybe... 
maybe he's got a hand like a king, right? He's got like king five of diamonds, and he's like, well, I'm not getting valued by worse. At the same time, I can check my hand down and win versus hand like eight sometimes. The Jericho shoves. That'd be too easy. Calls. So he likely has a 10 that he's check calling here. Okay. So... Be too easy check race here on the flop, which I think is fine against a bet on a small bet on a call. I don't mind the turn bet, but I actually wouldn't mind a check either because he can definitely be behind. And on the river, I actually don't mind. I mean, if I were him, I would definitely be worried about a hand like, you know, King 10, which is not actually less likely because of the king, but I would be worried about King 10 or Ace 10 or Pocket 4s or uh, maybe Pocket 7s even. So it's not like Be too easy is loving it, but he's probably thinking that the Jericho might turn a 4 into a bluff or he's got a flush draw. Um, or that he shoves the worst 10. The issue with the Jericho shove is that bit too easy must have checked with like 10 8 or worse and then check all the river, right? Which is kind of tricky. I think that bit too easy usually just has a give up here, and maybe he sometimes has something like a king, but I think it's pretty, pretty thin. So, for the tilts play, I think betting small makes sense and he called the race, but we can't really judge his play. I think the Jericho's play is, uh, this is a 6 out of 10. And I'll give Bitwizy a... I'll give him a 7.5. I think his play was pretty good too. <laughs>